developer console this might not be new to you if you are already a visual force developer um, but know that the developer console supports lightning resources as well uh, for those who don't know what developer console is or does um, this brief walkthrough is for you um, this is the place where you write code to develop custom components uh, and applications and classes and so on um, this tool is native to Salesforce and is always available via the uh, Salesforce web UI um, an alternative for this uh, would be the force.com Eclipse IDE uh, but if you don't want to go through the trouble of installing a new tool um, and the setup involved uh, the developer console suffices it is super simple to use and works great okay um, how do you uh, get to it click on the um, gear icon uh, on the top and select developer console Okay, it'll open uh, uh, the developer console in a new tab and um, from the file um, menu option you could go to new to create a new uh, resource okay um, uh, we could create a lightning application we could create a lightning component interface event um, or, or, or tokens okay we'll go over all of these uh, concepts except interfaces um, because I think think it is slightly advanced concept uh, and doesn't quite fit into a beginner's tutorial uh, domain okay um, and once you create a resource you will need to open it back to make edits right uh, so for that purpose there is a open lightning resources option which is specific for lightning resources and then there is another open option uh, which is for everything else including apex classes okay uh, so let's go ahead and create our first uh, lightning uh, component notice that the title of the uh, window uh, is uh, says um, uh, bundle it says new lightning uh, bundle um, uh, but scratch that term a bundle from your mind and just read it as component uh, so you're so you're essentially creating a new lightning component right now um, I'll go over why Salesforce chose to call it a bundle in a second but let's just go ahead with uh, creating this component first uh, specify a name um, there is no developer tutorial which doesn't start off with uh, uh, creating a hello world first um, um, piece of code so let's just stick with the norm um, hello world okay uh, and then down below under component configuration there are these five check boxes uh, for one for lightning tab a page a record page communities page and then uh, uh, lightning quick action um, these are not required and even if you miss to check them now it is very easy to enable them because all they do uh, behind the scenes is implement a specific interface for each uh, selected checkbox okay um, meaning that Salesforce is typing in a small piece of code uh, on your behalf uh, in the component uh, which you can type in yourself uh, I'll show that to you in a second as well but for now let us select a lightning tab and a lightning page uh, by selecting a lightning tab what, what we're uh, telling Salesforce is that enable this particular component um, uh, as a uh, lightning uh, tab uh, and then um, uh, lightning page would mean that um, enable this particular uh, component so you can drag and drop it into any of the lightning pages okay let's select those two and uh, click submit there we created our first um, uh, hello world component um, and uh, previously when we were creating this lightning component I mentioned that you should ignore the word bundle um, because every lightning component is um, is uh, in fact a collection of these eight client-side resources um, and together Salesforce refers to them uh, refers to them as a bundle um, but notice that component is uh, just one part of it but the word component became so popular that uh, when someone refers to it they actually mean uh, a bundle because none of these eight sections uh, can exist individually and uh, every other section actually uh, is here to support the uh, component section 
So the terms bundle and component became synonymous in the Lightning developers world. So feel free to use them uh, interchangeably. Okay. Um, and then there were those uh, checkboxes at the time of uh, creating the component. Um, and I mentioned that all they're doing behind the scenes is write a piece of code for you, uh, which is uh, implement uh, interfaces for each checkbox that you have checked. And if you recall, we have selected the first two checkboxes, which is uh, enable this uh, component as a lightning tab, um, and also make this lightning component available uh, to be drag and drop in any lightning page out there in in this work um, and for that um, notice that um, Salesforce has automatically implemented these two um, uh, interfaces comma separated uh, force app hostable would would mean that the intent is for this component to um, to be able to uh, work as a standalone tab of its own Okay, and flexi page available for all page types. This is what tells this um, the system that this particular component uh, can be drag and dropped into uh, any lightning page. If this um, interface is not implemented, uh, then you will not see this component uh, in Lightning App Builder, so you won't be able to drag and drop it onto any page. So if that is the case, make sure this is, um, uh, uh, so if you're missing any component uh, from um, uh, Lightning App Builder, make sure you um, enable this interface so uh, in order to expose it. Okay. Um, and then uh, the Axis Global. Uh, at a component level, uh, Salesforce supports two Axis specifiers. Uh, one is global, the other is public. Uh, when you specify global, it means this component will be accessible from any of the orgs. Um, and if you say public, uh, it will this component will be only accessible from within this org. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Going back to uh, these eight sections uh, on the right side here, uh, you can uh click on them uh, to uh, create or open them um, and component uh, is where you specify the um, markup uh, like in Visual Force page or Visual Force component the basically the HTML stuff which makes up the uh, visual elements on um, on the UI like sections input text buttons or what have you um, right so this this is the, the place where you put in um, the markup uh, controller uh, do not confuse this with an apex controller okay this is not that uh, this is for JavaScript so for disambiguation let's refer to this as uh, controller JS uh, this is one of the two places where you can write JavaScript code that interacts with your uh, component markup helper um, just like how you can write JavaScript code in controller JS helper also allows you to write JavaScript code so they are both uh, JavaScript uh, oriented um, then what is the uh, difference uh, the difference is important and we will see a lot of it in the next couple of videos uh, but until then just keep in mind that the logic defined within the helper is shared across similar components at a runtime so it is best if all the business logic is delegated to it, um, meaning that if you have to make a server call, it is best if you did it from the helper JS. That said, uh, I tend to think of uh, controller JS as a wrapper around helper JS um, because um, markup, uh, which is a component here, um, interacts uh, with controller JS, not helper JS, and controller JS subsequently interacts with uh, um, helper JS. Okay, uh, and style, uh, this is where you write your CSS code and apply it to the elements included in the um, in this component only. Uh, anything that you write in here does not impact um, any other component uh, except uh, this one. Okay, um, ignore uh, documentation, uh, renderer, and SVG. Uh, let's let's um, skip five, six, and eight sections for uh, for now. 
Uh, number seven, design, um, is a somewhat interesting section. Uh, remember when I was showing you the properties panel on um, on the right side uh, in Lightning App Builder, where you can customize the component by specifying certain uh, settings? Um, this is where you define those. Uh, any design attribute you include here will be exposed in the properties panel in Lightning App Builder. If this doesn't make complete sense now, that's fine. Um, we will be covering that as well shortly. Okay, so to reiterate, component is for markup. Um, basically your HTML stuff. You put in um, inputs, uh, display elements, um, buttons and stuff. Okay, uh, controller and helper are for uh, JS code for client-side interaction. Uh, and they both uh, interact with um, component. Okay, uh, and style is for CSS and design is to support configuration. Okay, 